Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu salam ala salam. We talk from the 40 principles of the religion, 40 fundamentals. The 40 of the Din by Imam Ghazali. Alhamdulillah. Inna kama ala muhibarain. And uh, we have reached envy. Uh, we are done with anger. I hope that we are done with anger. Not only as a reading. And all the uh, negative traits that uh, one is capable of uh, possessing. So Imam Ghazali, rahmallah, uh, began with uh, three traditions attributed to Prophet Sallallahu Of course, we'll speak about the chain of, uh, of narrators, which is extremely important. Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Envy consumes good deeds, just like fire consumes wood. Uh, Imam Bukhari uh, mentioned this hadith not as a sound tradition and his, uh, he mentioned it uh, and he said that uh, uh, which Imam al-Iraqi uh, uh, took it as a reference uh, here um, but it uh, Exactly, the uh, the uh, envy uh, consumes not only the uh, the hasanat; it consumes like fire. Let's stick with the fire. Fire uh, consumes uh, wood, firewood. Uh, then ultimately consumes itself, as we say, and. Uh, Envy, Imam Razali uh, would uh, explain that uh, you will hurt nobody but yourself. And in the second tradition, the uh, attribute to the Prophet, it's, uh, it's a weak um, you know, uh, chain of narrators, it's a weak uh, tradition. There are uh, three things from which no one is saved. Uh, speculation, foreboding, and envy. I will talk to you about the way out of these. If you speculate, then do not verify. If you consider something foreboding, then continue onward. If you envy, then do not transgress. And uh, though we said that the chain of narrators is, uh, is weak, it's, it's inevitable that people not really qira, uh, not really uh, envy, but speculation, yeah, that's that's pretty uh, common. It's not a hadith anyhow, but in the, uh, in the absolute sense. But we look at the, uh, uh, the message there. Uh, there are no uh, different cultures they have for whatever uh, reason they have developed uh, things that will uh, cause them uh, distress in terms of foreboding um, in the United States which I'm familiar with the uh, with the culture there um, broken mirror that's really good bad omen they don't feel good about it Black cat, you know, crossing this in the street in front of you when you are driving, for example. Uh, some of some people will stop, drive back a little bit, then uh, back to uh, forward, uh, as if basically you wipe out the uh, the effect. Uh, you don't walk uh, under a ladder, erected ladder. There are so many things that people. Um, People are not comfortable with uh, with uh, with black, uh, but I found also black cats. Um, I people I found also that said sometimes the same object, the same animal, the same bird could have different uh, interpretations or impact in different cultures. There are cultures that find uh, uh, you know uh, owls as the uh, as a good sign, and there are cultures that. Uh, 
they freak out by the presence of, uh, of owls. And, you know, the, the word boom in, in Arabic, al-boom, um, they always they think that it brings evil. Uh, it is followed by evil. But it's not a, it's not a, a sound tradition. And the third, the third one, uh, this is really, uh, you know, uh, narrated by uh, Imam Tirmidhi. The part mentioned mentioned here in the uh, in the in the book of uh, Imam Al Ghazali, part of it. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, The sickness of the previous communities has spread to you. Dabba ilaykum da'ul umam qablakum. Envy and hatred. Envy and hatred. And hatred is a razor. Uh, Hatred is a razor. Um, is a razor okay? The literal meaning of uh, haliqa. Uh, we talk about it really shaver. If one is going to talk about something literal, and the meaning here is that it's uh, in the rest of the hadith. لا أقول حالقة الشعر ولكن حالقة الدين والذي نفس محمد بيده لا أقول والذي نفس محمد بيده لا أقول حالقة الشعر ولكن حالقة الدين والذي نفس محمد بيده سدب إليكم دار الأمم قبلكم الحسد والبغضاء والبغضة والبغضة هي الحالقة لا أقول حلقة الشعر لكن حلقة الدين ولا نفس محمد بيده لا تدخلون الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحبوا ألا أنبيكم بما يثبت ذلك لكم أفشوا السلامة بينكم That's the rest of the, the rest of the tradition says that I don't say to you that it shaves hair rather it shaves religion it, When you shave something you just uh, uh, cast it away It's not used anymore and the, the Prophet ﷺ took oath by him whose soul uh, uh, is in his hands by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, uh, the soul of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will not enter paradise until you believe, you believe, you become believers, and you will not be believers until you uh, love each other. Uh, don't I tell you, shouldn't I tell you the, that which uh, will... Uh, bring this to you, uh, make it firm, uh, uh, spread peace amongst you. Easy said uh, for us today, because we are really, uh, whether internally or externally, either it is done to us or we do it to others. Uh, of course, we talk about of course, there are those amongst us who spread salam in the real sense, and uh, not only as, a, as a, an exercise in, um, in talking, but in, in real life. And I'm talking about the opposite. Sometimes we uh, spread hatred amongst ourselves, and sometimes we spread it to other uh, communities or other uh, people. And it's not only us, it's uh, all over the world. I can see that uh, there is so much suffering, there is so much uh, conflict, there is so much uh, killing. And justice, which is a cornerstone for peace, is uh, taking the uh, back seat, back burner, and all this talk about uh, uh, about peace without uh, without justice is uh, you know really it's uh, empty uh, empty talk 
uh, you cannot really demand that just uh, that peace will uh, uh, will be the uh, the way to uh, to justice is the other way around. We we have we have to talk about justice all over the world with justice because of the uh, lack of distribution of uh, resources, uh, proper distribution, uh, just distribution. Um, the neoliberal uh, economic order paradigm failed, it's not there anymore, things are, are changing and many people are, uh, in, including what's, what's happening around the world because of the uh, climate uh, change, probably there will be if things continue like this, we'll end up with, with a billion people uh, migrating to uh, here. When we talk about greener pastures, it has it has a different it has a different meaning. The the certification uh, drought, and of course, uh, military conflicts internally, uh, and of course with. Uh, with others. Now we talk about the uh, uh, SBA statement attributed to Sayyidina Zakaria alayhi salam. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the envious person is the enemy of my blessing. My blessing is now uh, almost like a hadith Qudsi, but of course uh, this is attributed to Sayyidina Zakaria alayhi salam. And I, th I don't think it's marfu'a. Uh, so the envious person is the enemy of my blessing with capital letters, angered by my decree and displeased with the division that I have allocated between my slaves. What's really, uh, what's really hasad? Hasad is wishing that uh, a ni'mah or more will, uh, uh, that have been granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to someone uh, and that the the envious person wishes that uh, this person the, who is enjoying the nama will uh, will not have it anymore. They wish that it would disappear, will depart. That it will not stay with uh, with him or her, of course. That's really uh, envy. And since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives the uh, risk, the sustenance, allocating really, and I really appreciate very much the translation of uh, using the word allocation, the, uh, the qisma. Uh, it's as if one is opposing, uh, rejecting, negating, uh, objecting uh, the uh, will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is an, ex you know, it's very, very, it's not only a very problematic thing. You know. How could one do that? Know that envy, I will go back to uh, what Imam Ghazali says as a commentary. Know that envy, which is um, to like for the blessing of another to be removed or for a calamity to befall him is unlawful competition which is to be happy for another and dislike for his blessing to be removed yet desire the same thing for yourself is not unlawful okay and uh, this is really there's a big difference between hasad and uh, uh, ghibta. The second is okay, that you'd wish for the same thing. You are not wishing that it would depart. 
competition which is to be happy for another and dislike for his blessing to be removed yet desire the same thing for yourself is not unlawful it is also permissible to like for a blessing to be removed from someone who uses it for oppression and disobedience because you do not want the removal of the blessing rather you want to re the removal of the oppression the sign of this is that if he were to leave disobedience you would not like the removal of his blessing envy is caused by pride enmity or the evil of the ego which is uh, a, you know, a thing concern, concerning the concerning allah's uh, blessings subhanahu wa ta'ala on his slaves when they are not in its uh, interest the idea of uh, wishing that something will depart it could be a supplication uh, may those who oppress uh, lose that which they have because of that oppression and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guide them to that which is right and then forgive them all those who uh, waste the resources of uh, of humanity on uh, on armament, on the military industry, on uh, which uh, also uh, benefits from uh, military conflicts, you know, creating military conflicts, uh, attacking countries outside uh, the law, international law, in violation of international law. So may those who uh, use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to oppress people, lose it. Envy is caused by pride and enmity uh, or the evil of the ego, which is a thing concerning Allah's uh, blessing subhanahu wa ta'ala on his slaves when they are not in its interest. In his interest, the, the envious. How to treat envy and remove it from the heart? Know that envy is one of the heart's greatest sickness. It's a serious sickness. And only the combination of knowledge and practice can treat the sickness of the heart. And I like the Arabic expression that Imam Ghazali uh, uses, ma'ajun, like a paste. Combination here in Arabic is really a paste. Made out of uh, it's a metaphor made out of knowledge and practice, and can treat sickness such a sickness of the heart. As for the knowledge based treatment, it is that a person knows that his enemy or the envy harms him rather and does not harm the one he envies, rather, it benefits him. It harms the envier by nullifying his good deeds and exposing him to Allah's uh, wrath. So, so envy is a for the envier is angered by Allah's decree and is stingy about the blessings from his treasure troves being spread out over his slaves. This is harmful to his uh, to his religion. It harms his worldly affairs in that he never ceases to be in constant distress and grief, which is what his adversary desires for him. For indeed, the most important objective and most perfect blessing for his enemy is the sorrow of the envier. The latter had intended for his enemy to be tested with affliction, yet it happened to him. The envious, the envious person is never devoid of distress and affliction, while his adversaries, or at least one of them, never cease to be blessed. As for him, benefiting his adversary and not harming him, this is because the blessing will not go away due to his envying it, it has no impact, as in Al-Razali's position. Though in popular narrative, people think that uh, it does not your it's not your decision. It's not your 
Uh, well, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees something, then that's a different story. In addition, the envier multiples, multiplies the good deeds of the envied, since the former's good deeds are transferred to the latter. This is especially so if the envier is always speaking ill of the envy, who is in this case wronged by the envier. That becomes backbiting and the the good deeds are transferred. And if you don't have good deeds, it's the other, the, you know, you'll take from uh, his bad deeds. The envier has sought the removal of a worldly blessing from the envy. Yet, in fact, he has added to it a blessing in the afterlife and obtained for himself a worldly punishment, along with punishment in the afterlife. He is like the one who throws a stone at his adversary but fails to hit him. The stone bounces back, hits his eye, causing him to lose his sight and increases the malicious joy of his enemy. Iblis, Satan, Shaitan. The blessing has surely been lost on him, as well as contentment with divine decree. If he had been content, content with it, there would have been a reward for it, especially if he was envious of knowledge or piety. For indeed, the reward for the of the lover of knowledge is magnified. As for practice, it is that a person knows that he knows the ruling of uh, of envy, and what entails in regards to both statements and action. And action. He thus opposes it and practices it, its opposite by praising the envied, showing joy because of his blessing and being humble with him. Through this, the envied will become a friend to him. Envy will depart and will be freed from his sin and his pain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, <laughs> Repel a bad deed with that which is better. And he for whom there is enmity between you and him will be as if he were a close friend. A very beautiful uh, verse, subhanAllah. Extremely beautiful. Uh, which really means that it, it, people might think that it's impossible, might be difficult, might be. But, but the, the, the Quran says that it's possible to change enmity. It's going to, it, it might take effort, changing conditions. Uh, but it's possible, except with Satan. Except with Satan. I remember the story of the. Uh, uh, member of uh, the political party in the Dutch, the, in Holland. The Dutch political party that uh, made it, it's, uh, this is the Geert Wilders party. Uh, Right-wing, uh, Islamophobic, uh, creating all kinds of narratives and movies against Islam and the Prophet Then one of them, a member, a member of the uh, parliament, who made it really his career to do that, while he's searching for... Uh, shortcomings or whatever in uh, in the Quran, in the Hadith, and he became a Muslim, subhanAllah. He became Wali Hameen. Perhaps your ego does not obey you concerning equality between your adversary and your friend. Rather, you dislike what is bad for your friend, but not for your adversary. You like blessings for your friend, but not for your adversary, and you do not trouble yourself with, uh, with what you have no power over. If you are unable to control that, then you must free yourself from sin with two things. The first of them is that you do not manifest envy with your tongue, limbs, or voluntary action. Rather, you oppose what envy entails. The second is that you dislike your ego's love for the removal of Allah's 
addressing subhanahu wa ta'ala on any of his slaves. It's, it's not up to you. Well, just, uh, if you see something that people are enjoying, a ni'mah, uh, you know that is really very common, a ni'mah that is special, a ni'mah that is really unique, just make a dua of, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless uh, this ni'mah that will increase this person that's, that really it, uh, came from halal and that it is for halal. Bismillah and uh, in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. If you are unable to control that, then you must be free yourself from sin with two things. The first of them is that you do not manifest envy with your tongue, limbs, or voluntary actions. Rather, you oppose what envy entails. The second is that you dislike your ego's love for the removal of Allah's blessings on any of his slaves. If this dislike is religiously motivated, but you still coupled with the love of the removal of a blessing as dictated by your natural disposition, that will be uh, with your natural disposition. Uh, here it's your tabak. Uh, Usually in English, when we use natural disposition, uh, we might be referring to fitrah, which is innate. For you surely will be unable to do so most of the time. This sign of your dislike for the removal of Allah's blessing is that whenever you might be able to remove his blessing, you do not proceed to do so despite wanting it. Also, if you were able to assist him in keeping his blessing or increasing it, you would do so despite your dislike of that. There is no sin upon you. There is no sin upon you concerning what your natural disposition dictates. For indeed, natural disposition becomes risky only in regards to the one infatuated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He whose vision has been cut off from material things and the creation, he knows that this blessing does not benefit the one who has received it. If ultimately he will be in hell, if he will ultimately be in paradise, then what is the blessing? What is this blessing relative to paradise? Rather, he sees all creatures as slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and loves them because they are slaves of his beloved. He loves that the effect of his, of his beloved's blessings on his slaves is manifest. And this is a rare state that is not included under the rubric of moral activity. بل يرى كل الخلق عباد الله تعالى فيحبهم لأنهم عباد محبوبه ويحب أن يظهر أثر نعمة نعمة محبوبه على عباده وهذه حالة نادرة very rare لا تدخل تحت التكليف it is not going to be uh, demanded of people because it's uh, it's difficult very 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 rare may we uh, enjoy such a state of being, uh, the heart should be basically very, very uh, uh, purified, clean, uh, in preparation for such a for such a state. Yes, may we never envy anyone. May we. Uh, Yes, not to extend our eyes to the blessings. Uh, of course, we look at the blessings. If we look at blessings, then we uh, we remember the uh, blessing and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we should. To enjoy looking at the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as signs of uh, the, that 
you know, a manifestation of uh, uh, of uh, Allah's generosity towards his slaves. I'm just simply also thanking him for the ni'mah that befalls someone else also. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Until tomorrow, inshallah. Subhanakallah bahamdik. Nashadu alam tasakhurka. Wa natubu ilayk. And uh, tomorrow is about uh, stinginess and the uh, love of uh, of wealth, of uh, of money. Assalamu alaikum.